Welcome to another episode of Savage Time TV. I'm your host, A.B. Briz, and today I got special guest, Greg Pritchard, with me. How you feeling today? I'm good. I'm chilling. That's good. That's good. That's good, man. Glad to see you. Uh, appreciate you coming down to the platform. It's dope. Um, if you guys don't know, this is my guy right here. Used to train with him at, over at MVJ, but we're going to get into that later on. Um, for the people that don't know, could you tell them where you're from? Uh, I'm from uh, North Philly, but I grew up most of my life in Delaware. Okay, okay, North Okay, North Philly. Move and you moved so you were raised, you born 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 in Philly and then raised in Delaware for the most part? Yeah, for the most part. I think uh I think when my sister maybe started school we moved to Delaware. Okay. Um just because it was a little safer and my dad didn't wanna uh, uh bring us up in the more dangerous environment where we were in Philly. Definitely yeah, definitely North Philly's a little bit just a little bit more. Just a little bit more dangerous, a little bit more dangerous. Um I, the three things that you're about, cosplay, comics, fitness. Um, former K1 champ. My first question about that is, uh, for the people that don't know, what is K1? Uh, K1 is a, I guess, like a section of kickboxing. It's a specific rule set. Okay. So, like, you have Muay Thai, you have uh, K1. There's, like, full rules, kickboxing, <laughs> uh, international kickboxing. So, each one is just, uh, um, one, a different sport, but two, it just has a different set of rules. K1 was my favorite because I never really liked clinching. Uh, and you're only, if you do clinch, you're only allowed to throw one strike and then you have to break. And if any more are thrown and you're still clinching, then the ref breaks you up. Um, so it's a more strike heavy sport mm -hmm. and that's what I prefer. Okay. And K1 is, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I'll be, I'll be watching now. Like, uh, but I, that, that explains it. Cause I used to always wonder why they would clinch and not stay clinched. Mm -hmm. But now I know why I can only do one strike. Um, how did it feel to be a, a champion? So, so young. Uh, I mean... <laughs> amazing <laughs> be, like going to school with like you know the, the the normal dynamic of high school everyone is like a football player basketball player whatever and they're the star athletes of the school uh and then you had me who was a world champion by the time i was 16 going to school and uh, i tried out for one sport it was lacrosse um and i was in such better shape than anyone else on the team that i was just like yeah this isn't for me i'm just gonna stick <laughs> Damn, so you basically to one point were just out here just running around people, yeah, running around everybody. Did, like, so you were bored, most of them, really. More or less, yeah, because <laughs> like we like running, for example, like you said, on Sundays we would run, like our warm up was like 2.3 or 2.4 yeah, miles. Yeah, that's, that's a lot, Greg. Yeah. That's a lot. Uh, and then we would do sprints and everything. It would take about like an hour and a half to do that whole thing, and it was all running. Uh, and then we went, I went to try out for the team, and we did one lap around our whole school, and everyone was out of breath, and I'm like, Brian, you warmed up yet? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's definitely wild. So, so fighting definitely gives you more of a challenge. And I, Absolutely. and I will say, I also, I also agree. One thing about fighting that's different from like a basketball, soccer, is that you, it's really you never really master it really, and you can always get you can always get better. There's always somebody better, and there's always something more to learn. Mm -hmm. So it definitely keeps you uh, interested. Uh, when was your first experience with martial arts? Uh, when I first experienced life, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I've been in it since I was about, I think I started doing classes at like three. But, I mean, growing up with my dad, he's always like, come on, throw some punches. Let me see you fighting stand, you know, stuff like that. So, I had been doing things like it, mimicking him and all that, more or less since I was born, because that's who I was around all the time. Um, but, yeah, I started doing, uh, uh, I think he taught Sancho at the YMCA. And he would always take me because he didn't have a babysitter. He was a single dad. So me always being there one day, I just asked, hey, can I, I want to do that. And he was like, all right, well, come on in. And it's been a wrap ever since. Okay. All right. And of course, you know, people learn things and you kind of play around with it at first. Um, don't know if it's serious or not. But when, when and why did you decide martial arts was something that you were going to take serious, um, put your actual passion and energy behind? Uh, well, it was going to be from a kid, from a, a very young age, I was always like in love with it. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, growing up watching, you know, Jackie Chan movies, Power Rangers, you know, all those things. Like, they were all doing martial arts, and I'm like, well, I do that, so I want to keep doing that. Um, my goal, I, uh, still to this day, I want to uh, uh, work in, uh, um, I want to be a, a stunt worker. So I want to, uh, uh, you know, be one of those guys in fight scenes, getting beat up, mm -hmm. doing, you know, doing the beating up, all that stuff. That's what I've wanted to do since I was a kid. Since That'd be dope. It. I went to one of our, uh, a place that my dad used to work. We had a summer camp where part of it was 
uh, learning choreography and stunt work, how to get hit, how to fall and all that. And that was just like the greatest experience for me as a kid because it was just everything that I had ever like w had been leading up to wanting to do. Um, so yeah, so as an adult, I still okay. do my best to one day hopefully be able to be an adult. Oh no, I can't wait. I can't wait for it to happen, man. It's going to be dope. Um, Tell us uh, the first time. I always ask. I always ask everybody some type of form of this question. First time you got your ass whooped. Uh, also very early in life. <laughs> uh, you know, being in martial arts, we spar. All yeah. Time. There was never a shortage of that. Um, but one time I distinctly remember was when I was young. I had lived with my mom for about a year, and then I came back with my dad. And when I came back for that one year, I wasn't really doing a lot of martial arts. Everything that I did over there was like I was riding skateboards, scooters, bikes, all that. So, uh, uh, coming back, I still thought, oh, I've done this since I was three. I'm still going to be good. Not knowing how, you know, not doing something for a while. Yeah, you get rust, very it. rusty. Uh, so, I sparred this one kid. I can't remember his name. But he punched me in the stomach, and I threw up. And that's the first time I really remember, like, damn. This I is real. a little harder. Yeah, <laughs> I got to do a little better. Those body shots. Yeah, yeah. body shots definitely hurt. Uh, describe the best. <laughs> describe the best combo or hit that you've landed on someone. Um, best hit. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, well, the best hit in a fight um, was I won. I got a stoppage from this, from what we call it's a technique we call uh, a soccer kick. So it's how you throw the kick that makes it a soccer kick. It's my right leg. And you kind of jump into it the way someone uh, steps into a free kick. Mm -hmm. um, so we were going to the leg for most of this fight, going bang, bang, going bang, bang. As the guy in the third round, the guy starts to get a little tired. His hands start dropping a little. And my dad uh, uh, calls out from the corner, uh, soccer up high, which means the same kick, the same cadence, but you throw it to the head. And I went clean across his head with my shin and split his face open, he stumbled back into the ropes, and I was gonna go after him, but he didn't pick his hands back up, and he looked like he was outstanding, so I like backed up and like told the ref, like, you should help him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should help him. <laughs> it's shock, I never landed, like, I never landed in that say, clean where it really like got a guy, Yeah. and I was, like I said, I was gonna go after him, but I was like, nah. I was about to say, I, you were talking soccer, soccer kick, I'm like, yeah, we, we learned that, well, I was like, we learned that, but then you said to the head, I was like, we never got that far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never got to the soccer kick to the, I was like, say, oh, I've never even tried that. Yeah. Soccer kick to the head, that, that would definitely it. hurt if you yeah. landed that. Absolutely. God, yeah, he probably, he definitely was probably knocked out. Um, uh, martial arts, uh, MVJ. Uh, we know Martha of stands for Modern Jiu Jitsu. Um, what what is MVJ for the people that don't know? Uh, well, Modern Jiu Jitsu is a, uh, a very practical self defense martial art. Um, it's I can't really equate it to anything because it's a combination of different martial arts. Mm -hmm. So it's made up of uh, a lot of the core Chinese and Japanese martial arts. There's judo, jiu jitsu, uh, aikido, kung fu, karate. So you have strikes, you have locks, you have throws. There's also groundwork, stomping, things like that. Um, it's really just a, uh, a martial art that really, really teaches you how to make it home safe to your family. Um, and not just with, you know, strikes, punches, throws, and all that. We also work in, you know, there's stick work, there's knife work, uh, as well as uh, uh, how to get to your firearm, how to use your, your firearm uh, efficiently, all those things. So it's not like a lot of people think, when I say it's a self-defense martial art, they're like, oh, it's like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I'm like, nah, you don't want to be on the ground like that. If there's more than one person who's coming after you, and I am down there trying to choke one guy out, well, the other guy's going to be kicking me in the head and stomping me. It's very true. <laughs> so it's not like that. We're very much staying standing, uh, making sure that we're safe, you know, 360 degrees, not just the person in front of us, but what's around us. Um, yeah, it's just, in my opinion, it is uh, the most whole martial art that you Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it here. Definitely. I definitely would agree. You guys definitely, um, you guys don't leave a stone unturned, I would say. Yeah. You guys are, de uh, you leave and definitely help me. Uh, you're prepared for just about any situation because yeah. like you said, stick, gun, knife, and make it home safe to your family. That's a very good way of saying they're definitely, you're going to know how to kick ass, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, that, that's the most important thing, um, making it home. Uh, who are some of your influences um, when it came to martial arts and just life in general? 
Um, well, there are the, the more uh, personal influences, like my father, um, my, uh, my teachers growing up. There was, like when it comes to the, the fancy stuff, flying, stunt work and all that, um, there was a teacher that we had in an old gym uh, named Seeing Scott. Um, and he was just super cool. He did all the flips, all the tricks, you know, V twists, all those cool things in Kung Fu. And so we all, most of the kids, we looked up to him because we wanted to do those things. Where when it came to something like fighting, we all looked up to my dad, who was seeking Greg at the time because couldn't buy kick his ass. Right, <laughs> he right, right. right. Um, you know what I mean? So if you wanted to be that guy who was just, you know, hands up, you throwing, you you making sure you making it out of there, it was uh, uh, my father. Then as I got older. You know, there were the, the, the more famous influences like Jackie Chan, Jet Li, um, in those stunt working, uh, uh, you know, sections of it. And then in fighting, uh, um, I didn't really have too many as I was, uh, as I was fighting myself. Mm -hmm. Just because I didn't want anybody to influence what I was learning. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, where now, as an adult, I'm like. I, I know the, the practicality of seeing what other fighters do and being like, oh, okay, I can use that in what I do. Before, I was like, I just got to focus on whatever I'm learning, uh, uh, focus on what you did in class, and that way nothing gets muddied and you don't end up doing something stupid that gets you knocked out. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, uh, so with you being um, a martial artist and with this new craze now of uh, these you know, celebrities boxing and things like that, tell me how you feel about that, just like with the celebrities boxing, Jake Paul, um, things like that. If they came about it a little more respectful, then I feel like I'd be completely fine with it. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, it's normal for anybody, like at any age to get into fighting. Right. I mean, we have people that come into the gym at 30 who may only really be able to compete in the amateurs, but they want to do something. They're the same day, same way we have you know kids that come in that want to uh, uh, grow into fighters and compete in the ring. It doesn't matter what age you are; you should be able to to you know try this out just like any other thing. Mm -hmm. But where I have a problem is when they you know are fighting other people who are not very clearly are not fighters, um, and they're you know making claims that they would knock out proven greats. And they're just, you know, <laughs> two fights in against a basketball player who's never put on gloves before and other YouTubers, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I mean, more power to them. They're making money. Any way you can make money, make money. But it just, it insults fighters as fighters because they had to, you know. Great they were grind. In, yeah, they had to grind for it. They had to be in the thick of it. They had to prove themselves in order to get whatever level of clout that they have. Um, so to just down talk and make a mockery right. of all those people, it's kind of a shitty thing to do. Yeah. And I also think that just because one thing I've learned, um, just with training, just with just boxing with pads is like, it's dangerous. Yeah. So it's like when the people are kind of making light of it, it's like, eh, it's not really to be made light of. Like when yeah. you're knocked out, that's a medical that's that's you. You're literally unconscious. Like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, like people are laughing at Nate. I'm like. Bro, Bull really knocked out. I'm like, this is, and he, he's about to, uh, Floyd Mayweather's about to fight, and I'm just like, man, I hope he can learn his lesson, but not too detrimental. Because yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, he's, he's, I mean, he must be getting a lot of pay, uh, get a lot of money, but somebody like Floyd Mayweather and some of these Woodley's about to fight, I'm like, man, they hit you the right way if he just decides, oh, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, they can very much well, They could seriously be messed the up. The thing is, for those guys, Eventually, you're either going to fade because you're not good enough, or you're going to fight those guys anyway. You know what I mean? Not Maybe not those two in particular, but you're going to fight other guys. You're going to run out of people who are willing to step in there because you got too much experience now. Mm -hmm. So you got to fight people with more experience. And unless they're cherry-picking people who have experience, but they're also bad, then they're going to run into people who are good at fighting. <laughs> that's, that's the true. sooner it happens and the sooner they can either humble themselves and... You know, take training seriously and actually, you know what I mean, be humble about how they're coming into fighting. Uh, the sooner that happens, then okay, you know, okay. the sooner it can stop being such a clown show. Yeah. I got I got a couple more questions, just, you know, some quick uh, fighter questions. One is, um, who's your favorite martial artist of all time? Excluding uh, your father, of course. <laughs> Can't answer uh, your father. Of all time? 
I'm not sure that I really have one. Okay. I, there are plenty of people that, like I said, that I look up to, that I see and, and use as imp- inspiration. Mm-hmm. But um, there is no one martial artist that I'm like, that's it. You know, <laughs> that's the one. That's, you know, I'm going to base everything off of this guy. I want right. to only follow this. You know what I mean? There are just too many. And each one, every great martial artist has a philosophy behind their martial arts that is completely unique. You know Very I mean? true. That's so what they're like. to idolize one seems ridiculous to me because it cuts off your ability to then uh, uh, learn from all the others. Right. They may be worse, they may be better, but they're the the fact that they are uh, so experienced in it, they have something to show you. That's true. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. That's definitely true. Because you know, everybody always just says, usually says Bruce Lee. So I was like, yeah, so I was like, it's, it's always one of the top three. It's like Bruce Lee. Uh, uh, I was either thought like, uh, Jackie Chan or you know, someone who's been yeah in, or, Jet, in, or Chuck Norris or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But someone yeah. who's been famous in media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And like I, I tried to look up a lot of old stuff that Chuck Norris used to do, um, like when he fought, mm-hmm. and a lot of the stuff that he did is very like cookie cutter in comparison to some of the stuff that I've learned recently. Mm -hmm. But that's just because, it only seems that way to me because, you know, he was one of the top dogs of his time. Martial arts evolves over time. So Mm -hmm. as time keeps going on, some of the things that he used to do to us now is stuff that we learned maybe as kids because, you know, our instructors grew up watching him. And they started implementing that. So then they started teaching us younger. And that's why I say it's just, you know I mean? It's crazy to to look at one martial artist and say that's the 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 best one because it's impossible everybody's got something for you and it may not they may not be able to perform the best they might not have been the best fighter but they know how to train someone to be one of the best fighters you know what i mean that's a skill within itself yeah and uh uh, one thing i wanted to ask you is how do you feel about um i know you don't uh compete anymore right uh how does it how did it feel to make the transition to teaching uh, and was it was it easy? Well, was it I difficult? Mean, not well. It was hard to learn. Uh, you know, what I mean, it takes patience, just like anything does, and especially when you're teaching kids. Um, when I was younger, I always preferred teaching adults because, you know, adults understand, you know, better. Um, I can tell a, an adult, you know, put your feet here, put your feet here, all right, hands up, and they'll most likely listen to that. Where a kid may need four or five times to to you know, depending on their attention span, um, but. Now, as I'm older, I really enjoy uh, teaching kids. I It gets annoying sometimes when we have a lot of new kids in over and over and over again because mm-hmm. then I have to keep resetting and making sure that they are acclimated and they can keep up with everybody. Um, but being able to uh, see, once you finally see, like when you have someone who's young, you get them at like six years old and you're training them, and then either they may have left or they may be in there for a long time and then you see them as now a teenager and they're just doing like everything you've ever taught them. You can kind of see how it influences them. Mm-hmm. That's just the feedback. Cool. Yeah, 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 I love yeah, that. Feeling. Okay, yeah, that, that always seems to see uh, results. I know that's probably, it's almost like watching, probably almost like raising a kid almost, like watching a kid grow. Yeah, it's like, man. Yeah, it's, into the, you know, that sport that I'm teaching. Them yeah, I'm about to say, I've seen you have that, uh, you have that uh, relationship with, God, I always forget his name, man. He just, uh, it's kind of, not short, but um, the kid that was just, he was just in there boxing with the guy from Nationals. Ah, uh, Gabe, Gabe, Gabe. Yeah, Gabe. I, I saw, I remember when he I first started. My first student, one of my first students, yeah, I remember- was uh, the first one. I used to train him uh, uh, kickboxing, but when he came back, he was just boxing. Oh, so he used to, I, I said, never seen him use his legs before. Yeah. I was wondering, I was wondering but, if he could do it. Yeah, it was, he tried to do a kick uh, recently, but it wasn't that good. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Gabe, man. <laughs> um, switching it up into uh, our favorite topic, anime, man. Um, anime is, of course, a lifestyle. Uh, when and why did you decide, decide to start cosplaying? Um, well, I decided to start cosplaying before I actually cosplayed. I always wanted to do it when, well, I can't say always, but when I discovered that it was a thing, I was like, I want to do that. Okay. Um, and I got big humbled going to my first uh, convention experience. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the first, it's really bad every time I look at it, but it makes me really proud of where I am now. But I look back to my very first cosplay that um, it, I had a mask that I made in eighth grade. Uh, in my in my art class, I had 
uh, not even mine, my dad's paintball vest and, uh, uh, what's called, one of his paintball guns that I use as a prop. Word. And, uh, uh, like some kung fu pants and an Under Armour. It was so bad. No, I said, that sounds, it it sound was, like, who were you, uh, exactly. you dressing up for? I'm like, who yeah, are you? <laughs> it was bad. So what I was going for is like a, like a, what's called, like a modern kind of, uh, uh, Ambu Black Ops from Naruto. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, ah, okay. I see yeah, what you. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah. what you mean. It was a okay. Aesthetic, so it made kind of sense. Yeah. But the kung fu pants would have threw me. Yeah. I don't know. When I got there and saw had like, all the actual cosplayers, all the people who had been doing this for years, and I was just like, mm, <laughs> mm. Uh, let me just. Yeah. But it lit a fire because then my very next, uh, uh, the very next cosplay that I made, I did Mugen from Samurai Champloo. I did. Uh, which car? I made my own outfit, like an actual one this time, where mm-hmm. the OC looks so much better. Um, so doing that, like going and seeing how much better everyone was, like it wasn't me going, dang man, I suck, I shouldn't be doing this. It was, dang man, I suck, I gotta do better. And so I just started learning everything very, very slowly. Because back then, there was not a lot, uh, uh, it wasn't a lot of like, materials to work with Mm -hmm. i used to have to buy the 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 stuff i make the armor from i used to have to buy that at harbor freight they didn't have that now i can buy like a six foot roll of it at uh uh, uh, michael's arts and crafts i can go to joanne's and get the fabric i need and all that um but before like all that stuff wasn't widely available so now like i'm able to learn i i've grown quicker in the last two years than i have in the first like five of me cosplaying. Dang, so you've been doing everything. it for a while. Yeah, so I've been doing it close to a decade now. Um, Damn. Yeah, two years shy of a decade, eight years. But yeah, so everything was back then was just awful. Growing into it now, I love it. I see so many new cosplayers just popping up. Kids that like younger than me than when I started just know have known about it because now a lot of us are at the forefront of the media that they see mm-hmm. and. Just seeing the new ones pop up, dude. Seeing like there was a kid who uh, someone said he they that I that they remind them of me, but I was like I don't know how. Maybe in our looks a little bit, but that kid is way better than I was, especially at his age. Mm -hmm. He was like eighteen, did like full Batman armor that he made. Wow. By hand. Wow. Amazing. I had a uh, had a friend in the military that used to do that. I used to think, and back then, because I didn't know what cosplaying was, I was like, why does this dude take so much time making these? Yeah. Like, he had made like a, he has a Deadpool thing mm-hmm. where it, it it looks just like it. Like, he, it took, it took him like six, seven months to make. And I'm yeah. like, bro, how, why? But not, but not, I understand now that I know. Mm-hmm. Um, What is the most difficult part of being a cosplayer? Uh, Just like you said, the time. Yeah. Okay. So he said it took him like six months to make this that thing. Mm-hmm. That's real. Sometimes, like a lot of uh, cosplayers go through what we call con crunch, and that is within the last few weeks of a con happening, uh, we're scrambling to get our cosplays done and wearable in time for that con. Um, and a lot of it has to do with procrastination. But mm-hmm. as well as that, it just takes a long time for things to happen. My least favorite part about uh, cosplaying isn't designing it, isn't cutting it out, isn't any of that. It's the painting and prepping for paint because then I'm just like spraying the, the, the rubber uh, plastic dip or whatever to, to get it primed mm-hmm. and then I have to wait. So I'm just doing nothing. But maybe I'll, I'll make another part while I'm waiting for that to dry mm-hmm. and then I'll go back down and I have to do two or three coats. So it'll take like two days for it to really, really be primed or really be, to, to really be ready depending on the, uh, the weather. If it's colder, it's going to take longer. If it's warmer, it'll go a bit faster. Um, but yeah, that's the worst part is just the amount of time it takes. Okay. If you got no patience, you're not gonna be able to. Uh, what's your what was your favorite cosplay and why? Um, I don't know. That's another hard question. Ask me what's your favorite cosplay. Like, who's your favorite kid? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> all my oh wow, wow. I put good time, good amount of time into each one. I think. I think the one that I'm the most proud of because I that was the first time I really put together like a full suit of armor rather mm-hmm. than just like a chest plate, maybe some arms or whatever, was my, uh, I did a samurai version of the Blue Spirit from Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had the mass 3D printed, so I didn't make that. But I had like 
the Shogun helmet with the ponytail coming out the back and the uh, like full set of armor, arms, the, the, the forearm guards, shin guards, the skirt, everything. I made it all by hand. All and custom. I, at the time, I was broken hell. So I skimped out on most of the thing. I thought the armor was going to come out trash because I, I couldn't afford enough plastic dip to get the whole thing. I had to just pray to God that it wouldn't rip apart. I put the whole thing together, like strung it together. It wasn't glued together or anything like that. So it was all like legitimately like samurai armor was. Like I had, you had to tie it on. To, Damn. To, yeah. So that's, that's hard. Yeah. That's, that's the hard. one I'm probably the most proud of because I just, like that was the first time building a full set of something straight from my own mind. Like I didn't, it wasn't nothing I, I like, I had to look at. Uh, uh, or something that existed already that I just recreated. It was literally your thoughts. Yeah, it was my own my own design from head to toe. Okay. And I think that's why I'm the most proud of it. Okay. Um, why why is uh, Shikamaru your favorite character? I always see you always post um, Shikamaru. Why is that? Honestly, he just fits me the most. I could agree. High key. I my, could agree. Like my, my favorite character in Naruto has changed over time. I used to re- when I was young. I used to really bang with Gara. That was my guy. Yeah. But the older you, the older I've gotten, he's still top three. But like I've gotten, yeah, I think yeah, you would do the same thing. So it was Gara first, and then uh, uh, when he had that fight with Rock Lee, Rock Lee became my favorite quickly. I mean, he didn't win the fight, no, but no, he, he showed that he was man. Yeah, for to the only use Taijutsu, he went did his Literally thing. Literally only used Taijutsu. Opened the eight gates was. Messing this dude up was the first person to really cause Gar pain. Yeah. And then, uh, even when he was beat up, had his leg and arm broken, unconscious, was just sitting there, still ready to go, bro. That is yeah. the coldest thing I've ever seen. He was my favorite character from then on. But I just have high key, like, just. Nah, Shikamaru fits. Connection with Shikamaru. Sh- Shikamaru and fits. Things. That definitely, that definitely fits. He be chilling. Doesn't yeah. say, doesn't say much, but you know. When he says it, usually it's you know something something of he does he 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 doesn't waste words. Yeah, he does not waste words. Shikamaru doesn't, doesn't waste words, words. Yeah. and he's and he's cool. Yeah. But, and he's I never when he 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 became interesting to me when he just felt like not doing the shooting exams. Mm-hmm. I was like yeah. he's like I I I don't want to do this. Yeah, this is a, I, I was like this guy yeah. right here. Still got enough chakra. I know I'm gonna lose. I give up. Yeah. Like, Yo, that's, yeah. <laughs> I was like, all okay. Right. Okay. I was like, all right then. High key. That and then afterwards in the Sasuke Retrieval arc, he really was cemented as one of my favorites after that. Yeah. Just because, young, and then afterwards, they failed, yes, but he, the, the, the lessons that he learned from it, dope as hell. Yeah, Shikamaru definitely, this is completely off topic, but not, Naruto, I don't know why y'all killed Neji like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I never understood. That was the one death that I just did not understand. He died from a projectile, yeah. and he has three sixty vision. Well, three hundred and fifty nine. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it just didn't make any sense. Completely, completely random. But um, switching it up, I always ask everybody about mental health. Um, what does mental health mean to you, and how do you keep your mental health uh, on the up and up? Uh, well, it means a lot. Um, I come from a family, on both sides of my family, honestly, that uh, have you know, complications with, say, anger issues. My mother's uh, diagnosed bipolar. So uh, I take it very seriously. I I try to make sure, like, uh, I try and be as self-aware as I can and really think about, you know, if I say something to somebody or if I do something that was kind of out of character, you know, I make sure to think about it to make sure, okay, why did I do that? You know, does it come from, is it really how I'm feeling or, you know, is it, you know, my brain feeling off, did something happen, you know, is there something wrong with me, um, just to make sure that, you know, I never want to be malicious to anybody, Mm -hmm. um, so anytime I notice, like, I do, uh, uh, and even as a kid, I used to notice these things, so, like, if I notice something that I do, it's a similar mannerism to something that my mom used to do that we didn't know what it was before, but now I know as an adult because she was diagnosed later on in life. Mm-hmm. Um, then I make sure that uh, I try and eliminate myself doing that or react differently the next time that it happens. Um, I mean, it's hard. It's not easy. It's something that if my parents 
or people that struggled with it, then I know I'm not gonna, you know, I mean, I'm gonna be the same way. It's, mm-hmm. it's a struggle. Um, so the be- the best thing that I, or the easiest thing that I do to make sure that I stay on the like you said, the up and up uh, is just that, just making sure I'm self aware, making sure I can, you know, uh, uh, call out those behaviors within myself because if I can see it, then I know that other people can see it, and if other people can see it, then I know I'm affecting them, and I don't wanna. I don't want to affect them like that. So I make okay. Sure that. That's okay. That's one. That's one of our one of our good answers for for mental health. I like that. <laughs> not, for, not for real. Like some people always give me like you're asking about mental health to give you some bullshit. I'll be like, bro, what do you what? Like, dude, <laughs> like, bro, you don't meditate. <laughs> like, like, don't don't lie. <laughs> I'm like, you don't meditate. But yeah, thank you. Um, what are your goals for yourself, for personally and professionally, for like the next two three years? Um. Well, hopefully, I start getting into some stunt work. Um, if not. I'm still, you know, trying to make sure I can grow uh, myself socially as a cosplayer. Mm -hmm. Um, Because the the bigger presence that I have, the more money I'll be able to to make from it. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to, as cons are opening back up, I want to start talking to some of the friends that I've made that are uh, essentially paid to be cosplayers. You know what I mean? They, they, uh, either whether it's going to events, whether it's selling things like patterns or cosplays that they've made or commissions. Mm -hmm. Um... I just want to talk to them and see how I can start to transition into making money from it. Okay. Um, because I've proven to myself that, you know, I'm, one, good enough at that to uh, to be accomplished in that sense, you know. So I have the skill and I constantly work on it. It's not like I just am that good, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. uh, something that I constantly work on. I've been able to prove that uh, uh, people like me, you know what I mean, in a, in a sense that, like, or people like the content that I make. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, like, you know, growing on things like Instagram, on Facebook, I uh, was able to blow up on uh, TikTok a lot. So, you know, I have the makings of someone who can, yeah. you know, turn it into a career. I just got to find out what those steps are so I can start to make them. Okay. All right. Well, this is a dope interview. I appreciate you coming to, coming to the platform again. Um, again, this is my boy, uh, Greg Pritchett, man, MVJ. This is Savage Time TV, and where can all your new fans follow you and find you? Uh, you can find me on most social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Protege47 or Protege Cosplay, TikTok as well, I'm sorry. Um, you can find me on Titch, uh, Titch, Twitch at mm-hmm. Protege47. I stream on there sometimes. I haven't been recently just because I'm trying to get a new PC set up. So, so you're a PC gamer. I'm not. I'm a okay. console gamer, but I'm trying to transition over Cause I went and played at my homie Mark's house. And it's different. It is amazing. It's so, different. Yeah, I'm it's to different. Her over to that. Um, but I also need it for things like you know editing, being able to you know process my own pictures and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So uh, being able to this will be the first like big purchase in that sense. Mm-hmm. So it'll help me in multiple facets. So I'm not uh, too much of a problem being able to spend some money on that um, as long as I have it. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah. Okay. Um, it, it, Protege 47 is usually where it's at. Okay. All right. Well, you guys know where to find him. Protege 47. This is your boy, A.B. Brizzy, and this is Savage Town TV. See you guys. <laughs>